I'm Steve and this is This Week with Cars. Barn Sprites number one and two are now on the road and drivable. This one is Barn Sprite number four. This is the next one I'm going to tackle. Just like Barn Sprite number two, this car will also be for sale when I am done with it. So let's take a look around it and decide what to do first. I've probably done a video showing what the inside of this car looked like when I got it. Let's take a look at what we have in here now. Here's the horn button here on the floor. So that'll go in the center of the steering wheel there. Looks like this car had some sort of weird stereo uh, speaker here sitting in the center console. We won't need this. This is just complete junk. The seats do appear to be in pretty good condition. They'll probably clean up just fine. And this car has carpet. And I think the carpet looks like it'll probably clean up just fine too. You can see the side curtains over there. Again, just like the previous Sprite, we are missing our temp and oil gauge. Someone has added a cigarette lighter and this is a vintage Motorola radio. The dealer could have installed this when it was new. Down here we have some sort of ashtray. Is that magnetic? Yeah, it's magnetic, but it's probably not useful for anything today. And I have a couple of battery cables. That's it. So let's get the bonnet open and take a look inside there. Under the bonnet, it looks mostly intact. You can see the master cylinder there. The air cleaners are still on the carb. We are missing a radiator cap. Generators there. Looks like the tack is even hooked up. It has the gear drive to change the ratio from the ratio of the belt off of the water pump to match up with the tachometer. Regulator and fuse box are in place on this car. So we're missing a battery and it looks like possibly one of the battery cables. And we're also missing the little hose that goes from the heater valve to the heater. But beyond that, I don't see anything missing other than that at first glance. Obviously little things like the air duct vent that goes here, you know, little things like that, but not anything that we need to get this running. So I'm going to grab a battery, put that in, and also take the battery cable and hook that up as well. There's paint filling the hole where the battery cable would mount. So I'm going to clean it up with my thread chaser here. It's kind of like a tap, but it's not as aggressive. You can use these to clean up holes. I use this all the time. Since I replaced the battery cable on this side, you can see there was two wires that were connected to it. So I'm gonna have to pull this apart, get these two wires out. And obviously this wire here going through the rust hole in the firewall is not correct. So I'll pull that back inside the car, figure out if I need to hook it up at all. And if not, I'll just leave it in there and I'll get this one, which does need to be hooked up, uh, connected uh, with a ring terminal up to the battery. Here inside the car, that wire that goes through the rusted spot where the battery acid had worn away on the firewall there does go to the back of the ignition switch. So I probably do need to put a ring terminal on and connect that wire up to the battery as well. I have both of my ring terminals on now. This is the one that goes through the rust hole and that's connected to the ignition switch. And this one is the original wiring that would be connected to the battery here. Let's check these wires, see if either of them are safe to connect. You probably can't hear or see this on camera, but this one feels like there's a little bit of current going through it when I touch it. This is the original wiring one. And if I grab the one that goes through the firewall, that we know goes to the ignition switch. I don't know if you can hear that. It's also a little bit of current that's going through when I touch that one to the battery as well. So I'll have to be mindful not to leave these connected uh, when the car is sitting, otherwise the battery will be drained. For now, I'm only going to connect the wire that goes to the ignition switch. Hopefully that will power up everything that we need to get the car running. I've turned off the lights now and maybe we can see the spark better.
You can see that spark coming off of that wire when I'm touching it there. Let's try the other one. Yeah. You can see this one is sparking as well. I just looked down here and I pulled on the cable. I don't know if I can get to that or not, but that cable right there goes to the starter and it's actually disconnected from the back of the starter. In fact, it looks like the starter is not bolted up to the engine either. So I'm just going to pull that out so that I can bench test it before I bolt it in. I don't want to bolt it in if it is not a good starter. I have the starter out of the car now. Let's connect a battery up to it and see if it runs. I don't need to worry about whether I'm using a positive ground like I am here or a negative ground. The starter will spin the same either way. I'll just touch my other clamp to the post back here and we'll see if it runs. Seems to run pretty good. I'll take this back over to the car and get it mounted in. The starter is installed and connected, but before I start cranking the engine over, I'm going to need to block off this oil line. Since there is no oil pressure gauge, I'm just going to screw a screw into this hose to block it so that this isn't spraying oil everywhere while I'm cranking the engine. Now let's pull the starter cable, see if the engine turns over. Turns over really well, actually. Now we need to check and see if we have any spark. I doubt that the points work, so I'm just going to take the distributor cap off now and check for spark there. Right here is the points. And if I have the ignition on and crank the engine over, if they're working, we should see them sparking. You can see how white they are right now. See how white those points are right now? That's all corrosion. I'm not even going to bother cranking the engine over before I clean these up. So I'm gonna go grab my points file, get these cleaned up, and then we'll test for spark. Okay, I have the points cleaned up with my file. I'm going to turn off the light and then crank the engine over. We'll see if it's sparking now. Okay, we can see the points that are working well now. Let's just take a quick look at the rotor and cap before I put it back together. There's a little bit of dirt and corrosion on here. And on the cap, you can see the corrosion on the pins. For now, I'm just going to clean these up and then put it back together. Down here is the fuel pump. It's driven off of the engine. And this pipe right here, this supplies the fuel up to the, both of the carburetors. I want to put an inline fuel uh, filter in line here. So I'm going to cut this pipe off here and here so that I can put a length of hose and a fuel filter there. It will also make it easier for testing the carburetors, filling them up with fuel, and testing if the pump works or not. So that we can start the engine, I'm just going to use my little drip tank of fuel here. It does have a valve on it so I can shut it off. I have the two ends cut off now. I'm going to hook up my fuel IV drip to this end so that we can put fuel in the carburetors. I have a little valve hooked up to it here. So let's turn on the fuel, see if the float bowls fill up. Okay, we can see this carb is starting to leak now. This fuel bowl is filling up. The gaskets on these carbs will have shrunk over time from getting dried out and not having any fuel near them. Let's crank it over and see what happens. Wants to run. A 
come over here where I can give it some throttle. This one started quite easily. Doesn't want to idle quite yet. Let's start this up one more time. Look at that, it's actually idling on its own now. You can see all the stuff that came out of the exhaust. Looks like it's mostly rust from the exhaust system. Actually, it doesn't look like any remnants of any mouse nests on this one. I'll need to order some parts before we run this anymore. If the fuel pump works, I'll be able to have this car run on its own. So hooking up my fuel bottle, let's dump fuel down through the pump to get it primed up. And then I'll crank the engine over a couple times and we'll see if it pumps the fuel back out or not. Okay, I'm just going to turn the engine over. We'll see if it pumps any fuel out. Did not appear to be working. It does have a manual lever on it. And pumping that, it looks like the pump is not working. Feels like it's stuck. So unfortunately, the fuel pump is not going to work, but I can hook up my IV back to supplying the carbs with fuel and use it that way to drive it out of here. I doubt there's any fluid in it, but let's take a look inside the master cylinder. Yep, it's bone dry. It's not completely corroded and terrible in there. I think I'll put some fluid in it and see what happens. If we get lucky, the clutch and brakes will start working a little bit. Now that there's fluid in the master cylinder, I'm going to hit the clutch and brake pedals, see if they return. I'm going to push the pedals down. If the pedals stick down, that means that the cylinder... Oh, yeah. I can't even push them down, so the cylinder is definitely stuck. There's no chance of having a working breaker clutch. I have the fuel bottle hooked up now, so I'm going to put it in first gear, try to drive it out of here. stuck because the throttle wasn't returning properly I had to use my foot to pull the pedal back you can see the tachometer is working now I think that was a big success today. Next time I'll try to finish up this car. And if you want to see more videos on this Sprite, remember to hit the subscribe button.